Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna to show you how you can increase the speed of your Wi-Fi. And this won't cost anything at all. We're simply going to use existing equipments that you already have. When you have slow Wi-Fi, it's just no fun at all. I mean, seriously, how would you binge watch Kevin videos on slow Wi-Fi? Before we check out the tips, we need to determine how fast your internet connection speed is without using Wi-Fi. Later on, we'll run this same test using Wi-Fi to see if there's any gap. To do this, you're going to need an ethernet cable and then connect your computer directly to your cable modem or to your router. Then head to the website speedtest.net. You'll find a link up above and also down below in the description. If you prefer, you can also download an app from Speedtest directly in the Microsoft Store. The benefit of this is there are no ads and they also claim that it works better when you have a faster internet connection. Once you have the app installed, make sure nothing else is running on your internet connection. You could even pause this video and then press on the go button. Once you finish running your test, you'll see three different metrics. First, you have the ping or the reaction time in milliseconds. The lower the number, the better. This is basically the time it takes to send a request to a server to when you get a response back. If you're a gamer, you want this number to be as low as possible. Next up, you have your download speed, and this is how quickly you can download something in megabits per second. This is basically the size of the pipe coming into your house, so the larger the number, the better. With a larger pipe, you can watch more Netflix shows on more devices at the same time. Lastly, you also have the upload speed, and this is also in megabits per second. This is the size of the pipe leaving your house. This will determine, say, how quickly you can upload a video to YouTube. Once again, the larger the number, the better. Now, we calculated all of these using Ethernet, so this represents the upper bound of what you can expect when we run this test again using Wi-Fi. Now that we know how fast your internet is, the next thing you'll likely want to do is check how this compares to the internet plan that you're paying for, or the internet plan that your neighbor is paying for. Here, I'm on Comcast, and I can see the details of my plan. It says I should be getting speeds up to 50 megabits per second down and 10 megabits per second up. When I ran the test, I was getting almost 120 megabits per second down. Now, I'm getting way better performance than this plan advertises. So between you and me, I'm just not gonna ask that many questions and I'm just gonna stick with this. But if you see a massive gap between what you expect to be getting and what you're actually getting, it might make sense to reach out to your internet service provider to ask them what's going on. There could be, say, a frayed cable or some other issue that they can come out and correct. The next step is to connect to your Wi-Fi and then run through the speed test again. If your Wi-Fi speed test performs pretty close to your wired connection speed test, well, that means that your Wi-Fi is already pretty optimized. But if there's a large gap between the two, well, that means there's lots of opportunity for improvement. So let's check out some of these tips. This brings us to tip number one. You wanna make sure that you place your Wi-Fi router in a central location. Here, for example, is a visual of what happens when you place your Wi-Fi router in an extreme corner of your house. Anytime your Wi-Fi signal, say, encounters walls or different obstacles, that'll weaken the signal. And here in the top right-hand corner in the kitchen, you'll notice that only a very weak signal makes it there. If, on the other hand, you were to place the Wi-Fi router directly in the center of the house, you'll notice that the signal makes it to all of the rooms and it's also a lot more powerful. So this way you'll get a much better connection speed in all of your rooms. And tip number two, use the five gigahertz frequency band when available. Most routers come with two different frequency bands. You have 2.4 gigahertz and you have five gigahertz. Here, for example, when I click into available networks, I see the two different options. Here I have 2.4 gigahertz and then I also have five gigahertz. Now the signal for 2.4 gigahertz is stronger. So should I choose that one? 
Now, even though the 2.4 gigahertz signal is stronger, you still wanna select the five gigahertz signal. And the reason why is you'll still be able to throughput a lot more data than with 2.4 gigahertz. When you compare the two frequency bands, five gigahertz is a much shorter signal, so it can't move through objects as easily. And as a result, it has a much shorter range but it makes up for that range deficiency by being able to transfer much more data. Not only is 5 GHz faster than 2.4 GHz, but you'll also find that fewer people use 5 GHz, which should result in a more reliable connection. Here, for example, you can download a tool through the Microsoft Store called Wi-Fi Analyzer. This will show you all of the different Wi-Fi signals that your computer can detect and it'll also show you what frequency band and channel they're all on. Here, when I look at 2.4 gigahertz, you'll notice that it is completely crowded with different signals. When you use 2.4 gigahertz, you're in a sense competing with all of these different signals, and that could result in some interference. If I switch over to the five gigahertz view, here you'll notice that there are very few people using five gigahertz. And in fact, you have some channels completely open. So I could have one of these channels all to myself, and this will result in a more reliable connection. To make this real, I ran a speed test when I was connected to my 2.4 gigahertz network, and I also ran one when I was connected to my five gigahertz network. On 2.4 gigahertz, I had much more variable download speeds, likely due to interference from other networks. On five gigahertz, I got consistently fast download speeds, so once again, if you have the choice, always go with five gigahertz. At number three, when possible, you want to choose a channel that is completely open or has very little competition. Back again in the Wi-Fi analyzer, here I am in the five gigahertz view, and you can see that there are currently other signals on channel 36, 153, and 157. So if I'm setting up a new network, well, I would choose one of these channels that doesn't have a signal on it yet. For example, channel 149. By choosing an open channel, once again, this means that there's less competition and there's also less risk for interference, which should result in better Wi-Fi speeds. If you don't want to install a tool that tells you what frequency bands and channels are currently in use, you can also just use command prompt. It won't be as pretty, but it'll tell you what's available. In command prompt, type in the following command. You'll also find it down below in the description. And here I can see all of the different frequency bands and the channels that are currently in use. Okay, so being on the same channel as others is bad, but how do you actually change your channel? You'll need access to your router. To find out how to get to your router, open up command prompt once again, and this time type in ipconfig. Under default gateway, you'll see a set of numbers. If you copy these numbers and paste them into your browser, that'll open up the login page for your router. If you've never logged into your router before, look up the type of router you have and then search online for default password and that'll tell you what the username and password is to your router. Once you log into your router, you should see an option called wireless setup. And right here, I can see my 2.4 gigahertz signal. And here I can choose the channel. I have options one through 11. If you're in a different market, you might have some additional options. Now I can set it to auto where my router will attempt to choose the most open channel. But if that's not working well for you, you could try different channels out to see how that affects performance. Down below, I see my five gigahertz wireless settings. And here too, I can choose a channel. Now remember, channel 149 was open, so that's likely a good one to choose. Once I make my changes, I can then click on apply. Tip number four, you should use a DNS or domain name server that's going to work harder and also faster for you. When I type in the domain name google.com, a DNS provider takes that domain name and then figures out what the IP address is behind the scenes. Here, for example, in command prompt, I can type in nslookup google.com. And when I hit enter, here I can see the IP address for google.com. I could copy that IP address and paste it into my browser, and that will navigate me to Google. 
DNS providers do this across all domains on the internet. It's a pretty big job, and it's kind of like maintaining a phone book. By default, if you've never changed this, you're likely using your internet service provider's DNS servers, and they might not be the fastest. To see how your current DNS provider compares to other options, you can download a tool like DNS Benchmark. You'll find a link up above and also down below in the description. Once you download the tool, click on Run Benchmark. Once you get your results, you can see how your DNS performs compared to other options. So here, for example, when I hover over my current DNS, it shows that it takes about 0.023 milliseconds to resolve a cached page. If I go to one of the top options, I can get that all the way down to 0.01 milliseconds, so less than half the time. And hey, every millisecond counts. To use one of these faster DNS options, I would recommend changing this within your router. That way this will affect all of your different devices on your network. Back within your router, you should find a setting called Domain Name Server. And here you can take the specific IP address from the benchmark tool, and then you can enter that directly into your router. You can enter a primary DNS server, and you can also enter a secondary. Now, you can also modify this directly in Windows, but once again, that'll only affect that one device and not all of the other devices on your network. Right-click on your Start menu and then select Network Connections. Here, you can choose the network adapter where you would like to change the DNS. I'll click on Wi-Fi. Next, click on Hardware Properties. And here, next to Domain Name Server, I'll click on Edit. I'll set it from Auto to Manual. Then I'll toggle on IPv4. And here now, I can enter in the IP addresses. And tip number five, turn off apps that are using your internet connection. Once again, on Windows, right-click on your Start menu and then select Network Connections. Here, click on Advanced, and then click on Data Usage. And here, you can see all of the different apps that are using your internet connection. Here, I see that OneDrive is consuming a big part of my internet connection. Now, let's say maybe I want to play a game and I don't want OneDrive interfering with my data usage. Here, I could right-click on the OneDrive icon and I could pause syncing. So this way I can ensure that it won't interfere with my gameplay. And tip number six, this is a bonus tip. If you need the best possible performance, you should just forget about Wi-Fi and use a wired connection. A wired connection will always perform the best. Here, for example, I ran a speed test across my wired, my 5 gigahertz, and my 2.4 gigahertz networks. And the wired network always performed the best. I had the lowest pings, and I consistently had fast download and upload speeds. Now, 5 gigahertz was close, but the pings took a little bit longer. Plus, you always run the risk of potential interference, or hey, maybe a new neighbor moves into the neighborhood and they decide to use the exact same channel that you're currently on. All right, well, now that we ran through all the tips, feel free to run another speed test to see what type of improvement you get. And I'd love to hear how much faster your Wi-Fi is now down below in the comments. To watch more videos like this one, please consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video.